Hey everybody, it's B Show Brian. Um, <clears throat> this is impromptu, but I found this out shortly before uh, recording "Break the Apocalypse" this week with Shaheen and John. Um, just a few hours ago, and I've been recording some videos, and I didn't want to finish out the night without saying something. Um, I have not always been in a position to do this because I haven't always been recording videos and, and podcasts when these things happen. But um, for those of you who know, I'm a huge Halloween fan. Here's my trigger, not trigger treat studios, uh, Fright Rags Halloween 2 hat that I reviewed on this channel a little bit ago. And I've even got, you know, the mic, the shape face painted on the wall. Thanks to my, my wife for that. But um, it's, it's no surprise I'm a huge Halloween fan. <clears throat> and the shape Michael Myers as a character, as an, a, in a, a symbol has meant a lot. And I'm surprised they don't have a tattoo at this point in my life as a fan of film and a fan of horror and someone who at one point aspired. And I guess some and deep down in my heart aspires to someday be involved in filmmaking at some point. I don't know. Maybe I'll win the lottery and, and, and be able to do that. But um, that part of me has never left and, and, Star Wars was a part of that. Some other films that I've not, I've not talked about, and I'll probably do some other stuff on this channel about, have um, inspired me. But Michael Myers as a character really had an impact on me as a kid. And even as an adult, just, just understanding why that character is so scary. Just the, the unconscious mind at work that... that monster that lives within all of us and it could just for whatever reason have happened to one of us and the effect it has on everybody else and just the silent stalker you can't bargain with it you can't reason with it he's coming and he's coming for you and he's not going to stop um and and the the way that character disrupted a small town and all these kids full of promise and like it's a trope that's been done a million times now at this point but <clears throat> that character for some reason has endured that image has endured. And I think part of what makes that character scary is how the the people behind the mask have portrayed the shape. So whether it's, um, God, um, it's, it's late, so I'm blanking, but um, I can see his face. The original shape. Oh, man, I can't think of his name for some reason. Um, How embarrassing. Nick Castle. Jesus Christ. Nick Castle. The original shape. Or Dick Warlock from part two. Um, Don Shanks from part five. I think one of my favorites, and I put him up there with Nick Castle, I think. Like, I like Warlock, but and he had a spookiness about him. Um, and I like James Jude Courtney, too. <clears throat> but I think, I think if, if you're looking at in terms of being scary, I know he looked goofy a little bit because of the shoulder pads in part four, but George Wilbur in part six is, is terrifying. There's a mix of, of stoicism, but also like he walks with a certain charisma. It's almost like when, when Myers knows he's going to get you and he's, he's bigger in part six and has, <clears throat> has a, a, a real big presence in the movie. But, um, you know, I, I just found out about this earlier, and it was confirmed by Bloody Disgusting. Actor, stuntman, and Michael Myers performer George P. Wilbur has passed away. This broke earlier today. I did not see it until this evening before I went on um, on air, I guess you could say, recording Break the Apocalypse this evening. And it, it look, I know we're getting older, <clears throat> and this stuff is going to happen. It's inevitable. I mean, we talked about... Like Lanny Poffo passed away, who was a wrestler, and Jay Briscoe last week we talked about. Um, but the more these happen, it, it just still bums me out. Um, I was not aware that he was 81 years old, according to Bloody Disgusting. Um, Sean Clark, who was a mask maker, and a, he's a filmmaker, and he does a lot of documentary work, and he, he books a lot of horror talent for appearances and conventions. Um he had said that Wilbur had battled 
memory issues in recent years. So if he does have or did have dementia or Alzheimer's or something, that, that's very sad to hear. Um, not only does it impact a lot of people that I've known throughout my life, but my grandmother that I was – I watched her deteriorate over 13 years, and it, it's not pretty. So um, I feel bad that he may have been having some memory issues in recent years. Um, and maybe, you know, he's resting easy now. But I just wanted to say rest in peace, George Wilbur. I really do – I, I, again, Halloween four, he wore the, the shoulder pads and stuff and he'd filled out by Halloween six. Um, I did not know that he was a stunt double <clears throat> and a stunt man for planet of the apes, blazing saddles, towering inferno escape from New York, star Trek two wrath of Khan Firestarter, ghostbusters reanimate. He was in everything. Poltergeist two monster squad die, uh, dead heat, die hard, the Burbs, Ghostbusters 2, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5, Total Recall, Exorcist 3, Silence of the Lambs, uh, let's see, Casino, Mars Attack, Spider-Man, my God. He was also in Every Which Way But Loose as an actor, Pennies from Heaven, Firestarter, The Running Man. The Running Man? Who did he play in The Running Man? I gotta find that out now. And Ghostbusters 2. Um, yeah. Um, condolences to his daughter Gina. Um, but <clears throat> aside from just the condolences, um, I always thought that George Wilbur was my spirit animal. I always jokingly called him that, uh, when I dressed up as Michael Myers, cause I'm, <clears throat> you know, John don't call me Burley for no reason, but, um, my voice is starting to go. So I apologize, but, um, yeah, I always had an affinity for George Wilbur. He, he brought a physicality to, Michael Myers in the shape. And uh, that's me on Halloween a few years ago. And I jokingly referred to myself as the Wilbur shape when I dressed up. Um, as you can see. But <clears throat> there was something about his performance in Halloween 4 and Halloween 2. Warlock was very robotic, patterning his style after the, the last few minutes of the first movie. And I dig it. But Wilbur seemed to bring it back to um, a more fluid movement. He almost strikes like a snake in some scenes. Like there's um, the scene where he grabs Grady and lifts him up, breaks his neck. Or even the scene at the uh, the the shop, unless it's Tom Morgan. I think it's I think it's George Wilbur where he spears a guy with the pipe or whatever. Like there's certain, certain points in the movie where he, he acts or even on the roof when he goes at, at Rachel with, with the butcher knife over the peak and she rolls and falls. There's just, there's a certain presence and physicality that he had that made it terrifying. And it was even more so terrifying when he gained some weight and filled out and, and Halloween six, that one scene, there's, there's a couple scenes uh, when he comes out of the darkness and he grabs the nurse and <laughs> up on the wall and he just stands there, it's like he's just a big presence. But then there's another part, I think it's shortly after that, when he goes out into the night and he throws the, the, the door from the trap door in the basement, throws it off, and he steps out into the night from the shadows. It's like, it's like a whole new experience. Um, and I think he brought a lot to that role. I think Halloween 6 is much maligned for a lot of reasons. But one of the shining bright examples of how great the franchise can be, even in a terrible sequel, was George Wilbur is the shape. I think he's one of the redeeming qualities of that movie. Um, Halloween 4 as well. I think he's part of the reason why Halloween 4 works. I mean, that mask at times looks pretty bad. The the As I mentioned, the hockey pads to beef him up looked kind of strange sometimes but Wilbur's portrayal of Michael Myers in those scenes I think I I, I think had you just had a guy in a suit like they said Tom Morgan is a great stuntman did well in um, Friday the 13th part 5 but there was something about it that they didn't they didn't quite like and they brought in uh, George Wilbur and he did a great job so again a certain physicality brought to that role at a time when it really needed a resurgence um, got us through some some middling to terrible sequels. 
as far as the franchise is concerned. I know a lot of people don't like Part 6. Uh, part of the reason I do have an affinity for it is because of George Wilbur. So, again, my condolences to his 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 daughter and the rest of his family and his friends that that uh, that will miss him. He was a a big part of the Halloween franchise, and from everything I've heard, just a uh, just a, a nice man. So, rest in peace, George Wilbur. And uh, guys, I'll see you next time.